Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. I'm fresh, well, actually, I'm mid two tours prior to the UK one, after the European one, on strict voice rest. So when I do the theme tune, I'm only going to be doing it instrumental. <laughs> hope you understand. Um, today I'm talking about uh, The Prodigy. My producer asked me if I liked them, and I said, no. I'll talk more about that. Um, I won't go into the exact reasons why, because some of them are quite personal. <laughs> but I still love you. And uh, yeah, here we go. Yes, well, anyway, the Prodigy are on tour right now. So my producer asked me if I like them to see if we should cover them on the channel. And I just said, no, not really. Um, but I'm going to cover them anyway. Um, it's not that I dislike them strongly. It's just I never, I never really, I suppose it's because when I was, I think when I was between like 18, 20, I think the first Prodigy stuff was coming out and it's stuff like Charlie, you know, and then it was Charlie Shad, um, which I suppose... I don't know, it's the sort of song that you used to hear in the kind of clubs that I didn't want to be in and I wasn't never really having a good time and, you know, maybe because me and my mates were the uh, the outcasts, the uh, the flotsam and the jetsam and we were getting beaten up by the, uh, the trendies or the townies or whatever you want to call them. I just, that seemed to be the soundtrack to my ostracism from mainstream people. <laughs> and, um... But, you know, maybe that's got nothing to do with the prodigy themselves. I know they morphed into something that was more punk, <laughs> punk uh, inspired. But, you know, I, and usually I'm always positive on this channel. Uh, and occasionally there are bands I just don't get um, or like or can pretend to like. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm always open minded, though. So if I cast a critical eye on something by the prodigy, maybe it will begin to make sense and resonate with me in a different way. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, to remind myself of the Prodigy's music, we're going to listen to their classic hit, Firestarter, and I'm going to see if there's anything I can... anything I do like or anything I can tolerate or if there's any hope whatsoever. Um, oh, by the way, there are tickets available to my live Justin Hawkins Rides Again for the first time UK tour, um, and it's going to be loads of fun. I'll probably dislike a lot of the things that I cover in that um, the link to get tickets is in the description um, if you fancy coming along please do so okay before I go into this Firestarter thing the Prodigy are an English electronic dance band formed in Essex in 1990 they are pioneers of the breakbeat influenced genre big beat and describe their style as electronic punk I don't know I think I think maybe maybe that's the thing that bothers me. I think the to use the word punk in the context of anything that involves electronic. I mean, maybe it's a juxtaposition that, that hasn't quite settled in my mind yet. I'm not sure. Um, they reached their commercial and critical peak with their third studio album, The Fat of the Land, which went to number one in 16 different countries. Um, the original lineup also featured dancer and vocalist Keith Flint, who is quite revered now in the UK culture since he passed away in 2019. Um, the Prodigy are one of the most successful electronic groups of all time, um, selling an estimated 25 million records worldwide, including over 4.7 million albums in the UK alone. That's those are brilliant stats, actually, because often, oftentimes, <laughs> the word I hate, you know, you'll find an artist like the Prodigy or whichever artist it is that happens to capture the zeitgeist has one territory where they really kick ass and then all the other ones do slightly less good. But to sell only, it seems like only 4.7 million albums in the UK means they had an international appeal, which means they had a certain charisma and charm that made them household names right around the globe. I should rethink my position on this, um, and as you know, I'm always prepared to admit when I'm wrong. And I'm already remembering how cool that jumper was that he used to wear. That was a cool jumper, wasn't it? Stars and stripes. It makes me feel good about my choice today. Is this punk? Is this punk rock enough? Do you think? Um, it's got uh, the Pink Panther on a computer making some electronic dance music, and there's a. You can see what it is. It's a 
some spaceship stuff going on. Maybe he's in like the air traffic control for 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 Rocket Land. <coughs> I don't know. Fucking, it's not. It is punk though because I'm wearing it. <laughs> That's how you know. Okay. I just remembered it. Is that is that a guitar part? He looks like he's in the crumbling uh, remains of a Thunderdome-like erection building. And there's all sort of lumps of stuff around him. It could be the Chunderdome. Well, that's obviously Keith, isn't it, with the jumper on? And then the other one, is that Liam? The, the one that creates the beats? I don't know. Or is it like in a sewage tunnel or something like that? So I like this old-fashioned style of, uh, you know, cut-and-paste music stuff. I'd, I've always liked it, actually. It's that, it's when they take the, in the old, the old um, sort of funk records and disco stuff, there used to be a section when it said, give the drummer some, and then allow a few bars for the drummer to express himself, and it would just be something groovy. Maybe there would be some p- percussion alongside it, and then people would rap over it. That's the origins of hip-hop, isn't it, F- from what I can understand? Um, and then this is like an electronic dance version of that, or it's just like, it's, I don't know. Yeah, it's that philosophy applied to electronic dance music in the 90s. I'm the fear addicted, danger illustrated. I'm actually recognising a bit of similarity in the timbre of Keith Flint's voice to that of John Lydon. I'd never noticed it before because I think John Lydon always had like a... He'd be slightly more melodic than this, he wouldn't be sort of rapping, as it were. Um, and he'd have like a, a very fast sort of vibrato, which sets it apart from this performance. Um, but there's something in the, the timbre and the accent, isn't there, that's really similar. <laughs> it actually makes me laugh when people describe themselves as twisted. Um, it's seldom accurate. But maybe it's true on this occasion, though. <clears throat> but this is so iconic, isn't it? Like, if, as soon as you hear the word twisted now, I always think about this. It really did uh, capture something. It captured people's imaginations, didn't it? But I don't know what he's trying to say. Is it just like a nihilistic... Um, fuck it, I want to watch everything burn type thing? Or is it... Uh, or is there something underlying that's sort of forcing him to sort of, uh, or compelling him rather, to uh, behave in an antisocial way whilst selling millions and millions of records? On the beach you hated, you hated. I like his jewellery as well. I think that's a really cool... It's a cool length to have a chain. I've started doing that now. And the reason being that when you're a physical performer, anything longer than that's going to hit you on the nose. Anything shorter than that's going to be a bit restrictive. It's just just right, and he's he's nailed it on that. Yeah. yeah. I'm a fire starter. Fire starter. It's a really cool haircut as well, isn't it? It's like um, if you are developing somewhat of a sunroof, in you know, as as the uh, which is natural for men of all, uh, of a certain age. The bits that remain, the temptation is to shave it all off and go, ah, this is a fashion choice. There's nothing nothing to see there. And, you know, try and deflect from the disappearing hairline thing. Or the other thing, you can showcase the side bits by making them into spikes. Fucking brilliant idea. I know a few people that have done that, actually, and it's really effective. And I think Keith Flint invented that look. Is that fair, do you think? Use the comment section below. I think he invented it. And actually looking at some of these images, if I just if I just pause it, I've just paused it at one minute twenty-eight. And I'm looking at his visage, physique, and just overall aesthetic. And I'm wondering I'm wondering if we would if young blood would exist in, in its current sort of permutation without the influence of Keith Lynn. What do you think, guys? There's some, definitely some similarities there, right? You're the fire 
Two chains. I've just counted them. Two chains. Mm, I want a second chain. Slightly longer than this one. He's right. I think my, <laughs> I've just realised what my issue was. I, I don't think the prodigy has ever been something that uh, I disliked. I think I've always had a sort of weird fondness for it. Um, I think what used to piss me off was the people that actually danced to it. <laughs> You know how obnoxious they looked and were uh, back in the days. You know, but actually, it's quite a fun listen, isn't it? I always think that there's certain there's certain bands whose legacy have been tarnished by their fan base. Really, um, the Prodigy might be one of those. I'm not even talking about the fans of the Prodigy. Like, if you go and see the Prodigy live, that's a different thing altogether. That's just people that enjoy live music. When you hear it in a club and you see the people dancing to it in a club in the '90s. Fuck me, what a gaggle of twats. <laughs> no offence to anybody apart from the people that I've just offended. And yes, gaggle is the collective term. I'm the one infected, twisted animator. He's the twisted animator. Fire starter, twisted fire starter. The other thing is, I remember reading Firestarter. It was a Stephen King novel um, about a pyrokinetic child... And his, uh, her, no, it was, yeah, her telekinetic father on the run from the authorities who wanted to weaponize her. Um, and I feel like that's a, you know, as an adolescent, that, that book moved me in a certain way because I was really into horror and stuff anyway. But there's a bit, somehow it was a bit deeper, you know, like the, the storyline was a little bit more layered I suppose it was, it was it had stuff like family not just fires and all that and then I found this probably a little bit reductive in comparison and, and to call it Firestarter when there's an epic piece of horror literature out there of the same name and then not kind of explore the same themes you know lyrically maybe I was disappointed by that but I'm missing the point. It's dance music. We're supposed to be dancing, not thinking. <laughs> I'm wasting my time thinking. Stupid. I'm a fire starter. Twisted fire starter. Fire starter. Fire starter. Fire starter. You know, because I think the little girl in Firestarter wasn't twisted in any way, just a victim of her own supernatural abilities, really. We can all relate to that, can't we? And the camera loves Keith Flint. Let's just face that. What an iconic image. Such a ballsy performance. You know, I mean, I don't think there's anything... There's not enough... For me, you know, like, to, to really love a thing, they'd have to have a little bit more, I don't know, harmonic information, <laughs> perhaps. There's a bit more going on lyrically to really permeate my my stubborn insistence on you know that stuff but um I'm, i think i've been missing the point it's just a bit of fun it's just a bit of fun with an iconic dance dance performance and something that resembles slam poetry over the top of it and yeah it has got it has got some punk vibes mainly because of the way he looks really but uh, yeah i don't think you'd be able to listen to that as a composition uh, and as an arrangement, really, and sort of consider it punk, but it's electronic. So, how punk can you ever get? That's that should be the challenge. Let's how punk can an electronic thing be? Use the comment section to point me in the direction of some really punk electronic stuff. I'm not talking about Sleaford mods. I've already covered those. Um, not talking about. That's the only example I can think of off the top of my head. Sleaford mods is electronic punk, but I think there's more disaffected. English bloke in in the lyrics that's a bit more I don't know yeah it resonates a bit more because it, it goes into more depth I think about the experience of being that guy whereas I think Keith Flint is like a cartoon character and I mean that in the greatest with the greatest um, admiration actually because it's sort of it can be both reductive and emblematic he's like he's just an icon isn't he the uh, living embodiment of the outcast, I suppose. Anyway, there ain't nothing wrong with a bit of fun, is there? Even if it's made of laptops. Before laptops, probably 
tower pieces or Atari STs maybe and samplers definitely Akai samplers I don't know I have to watch the making of to really go into <laughs> accurate detail about how it was crafted but there you go and again I'm not going to sing I'm just going to do it instrumental thanks for your understanding on that uh, voice rest thing I've really got to be good for these UK shows or else what am I doing um, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications watch one of these two videos, tell me what you like about the Prodigy and what you dislike about the Prodigy um, go into some detail as well in the comments, tell me what you thought of the early early stuff and how their sort of evolution into that um, uh, sat with you um, and um, oh yeah join the mailing list, um, don't forget the tickets for the uh, live Justin Hawkins Rides again for the first time tour are available yeah, links in the description um, watch one of these two videos did I already say that? not sure um, see you on the ice nice one guys be careful out there yeah okay.